So I want to draw a Spinosaurus, but um, I want to get a good position for the Spinosaurus. And to do that, we need to do stick figures. So I was watching a video by Sertzi, who's a Twitch streamer, about how to stream for Twitch. And she said that it's always a good idea to do your free sketches off stream, because sketching requires concentration. And she's not wrong. And what I'm doing here is basically trying to come up with a good pose. Something that's interesting that will work well for a Spinosaurus. Because Spinosaurus has some very strange there Proportions. That's the word I'm looking for. It's got a big tail. Do I want it? Um, what do I want to do? I'm basically putting in my very basic lines. Because right now, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how I want the whole body to be positioned. So we've got some shoulders. Yeah, I don't know, that's kind of... That's kind of boring. And that's the other reason why I am doing my stick figures, because I should probably make these fellas a little bit smaller. Eh, I probably should also put in the head just for the sake of it. But, unfortunately, Spinosaurus is a very long dinosaur, which makes it awkward for height space to fit in the frame. Uh, what do we want to try? Let us try a more standing up style of Spinosaurus, maybe. Okay, how do I want the hands to go? Because the hands are kind of, you know, curved in. The neck is longer, and the head will probably be like there. Probably more of a splayed leg. Uh, gonna go with some, maybe, see, the thing about Spinosaurus's fin, or sail really, is that there are so many people drawing it the way that I just drew it. Um, forgetting the fact that there is only one set of skeleton that they have found of Spinosaurus. One set of skeleton, and how, ma like, how many dinosaurs would there have been around? There wasn't only one solitary Spinosaurus. There's probably like another Spinosaurus way down into the cores of the Earth that we don't know about. But because we only have one skeleton that has the sail like that, how do we not know that that was not a deformed Spinosaurus? How do we not know Maybe that Spinosaurus didn't get into a fight with a T-Rex, and that the T-Rex grabbed onto its sail and broke its sail, and that maybe when the bones healed themselves, they just happened to curve out at that end. I don't know. I don't. I haven't read many papers, so I don't know the um. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how the bones are actually structured, but. One spine, one spine fossil means that there is potential, potential that maybe the spine did look like that after all, even though it's now pretty much determined as a tadpole-like Spinosaurus. When doing your stick figures, you, especially when recording, like when not recording is probably not that big of a deal, but when recording, you really want to be doing from the left to right, otherwise you'll end up covering like I have. Um, I like how this one went. Um, I don't like that. So, am I going to have, are we going to have the leg coming up? Or are we going to have the leg coming down? So obviously this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to draw Spinosaurus. This is more of a tutorial on how to plan out your postures and how to plan your poses. So is this 
one going to be mid walking cycle cuz i mean you can just learn how to draw like you know a spinosaurus with both feet down on the ground but that could be boring possibly you want to have something that's a bit more dynamic maybe uh i think the shoulders are down there very long body and i have seen people drawing it with its arms up like so naughty motorcyclist maybe i'm going to start doing a bit of this in pen cuz i mean i'm not going to be actually drawing properly so i can do it in pen and show you a bit better of what i'm going on about so and obviously when doing stick figures like you know if you want to uh, what am i trying to say i don't know what i'm trying to say well i mean if you if you're planning out with stick figures you probably won't be using a pen which is why maybe i should just be doing it with pencil anyway But this is basically just like a rough little sketch to see if I like the position of a mid-walking Spinosaurus. Do I prefer a mid-walking cycle Spinosaurus, maybe? And I'm going to be doing this a lot for like dinosaur fights as well, because I know y'all want me to draw um, Indoraptor versus blue the raptor so that's going to be a very tricky image to conjure up unfortunately also <laughs> my camera was skewed i like having a bit of weight on the tail as well because having a bit more weight on the tail means he's less likely to fall on his face because of how front bodied he is or well, it is because we don't know the, the gender of these dinosaurs so yeah this is incredibly rough incredibly loose i don't think i like that particular pose so we're gonna have a <laughs> because this is a rough little sketch that doesn't matter i'm just gonna do this because i can <laughs> that's silly but hey whatever all right back to more serious matters now let's try i didn't mind the sort of sitting up posture that might be the most ideal way to go although i love the images of spinosaurus swimming so that might be an optimal way to go. So he's got very short legs. How wide is Spinosaurus? Is he narrow or wide because i mean that's also going to have an impact on how far spread the legs should be and i know that because dinosaurs held their tails upright it's very very bad to have a tail on the floor but you have to know the rules to break the rules so thus enjoy my tail on the floor because I can. Let's try a posture of a swimming Spinosaurus. So maybe the legs will be up. A tail going like that. Um, I wonder how it would use its i mean the whole it's a very convoluted swimming creature really would it really have swum 
Or would it more have used its tail for... Oh, I suppose crocodiles swim. It's basically a big crocodile when you think about it. Or do we want to have a Spinosaurus that is more kind of facing us in a third per... Uh, I forgot the terminology for it. Third perspective, three-point perspective. I don't know. This is also me practicing because I haven't really planned out drawings in a while. I did make a short, a very short uh, video on how to get back into drawing, which is basically you just have to do it. Do it. But also because I haven't drawn in a while, like I've drawn a lot in the last uh, month, but also I haven't really drawn all that much, so I still feel a bit rusty, especially when it comes to sketching out things. Also, sketching out things in such small format doesn't always work well. And you know, this is a bit of a, I don't know, I don't like that pose much. Still liking this one the most. Let's try a combination of that and a combination of that. Bring that up. So we have a posture of walking. Gotta remember, short legs. And then, leg, maybe we'll have the leg, instead of it coming out that way, we'll have the leg just lifting up. It helps to think in a animation standpoint when it comes to like drawing your poses, but I think the leg might actually have been lifted up too much there. Also, I'm not liking how this one has turned out, but it doesn't mean that the shoulders and the neck and the head can't turn out to be good. Maybe I might have the head a little bit lower. I do seem to like a lower positioned head. So let's try again with just the head. Bring it down so there's a lot of weight on the neck. Oh. And the other problem is trying to do multiple different versions in such a small format, because that's also very tr challenging. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to actually draw stick figures sometimes, because you're trying to think of the whole posture while working out the stick figures, and when you're doing it in such a small posture, well, not posture, when you're doing it in such a small format, it is very difficult to kind of get the hang of what you're actually doing because it's so tiny but the smaller it is the more you can fit on your page and that gives you more options to work with for your when you start working on your actual drawing so i do like the heavy body so maybe let's try another body make the body tilt down a little bit with the arms. The arms are longer than that, so we want the arms to be a bit more like that. There's gonna be the wrist, maybe there are gonna be some arms in there. Maybe it'll be like that. That's right, we were gonna do a lower hanging head. And you can always draw over your stick figures as well. I keep forgetting that. Don't be too precious. The more precious you are with your drawings, the less inclined you are to experiment and get some potentially even better drawings. So, you know, when you're sketching, planning out, this isn't going to be a finished product. I mean, it's in ink. I can't erase any of this. So don't be afraid to just draw over things. Play around. Don't be scared to experiment, and eventually, each drawing is going to get a little bit better. I don't mind the bringing of the foot up. The bringing of the foot up makes it a little bit more interesting visually, 
And I know especially Dinosaur Drawer has always uh, pointed out that he loves how I make my drawings very sort of dynamic and the poses aren't, you know, just your typical pointing left, pointing right. So I like to make my poses a little bit interesting. This is where doing it in pencil would be better because I kind of ruined the foot a little bit there. I don't mind the idea of the leg being out like that. That's not bad. I do like that part of the body. But maybe I made him a bit too thick. Let's try another sort of more standing up position. Because I do like the sort of pelican swan duck pose. There's nothing to say I can't do two, three, four a million different Spinosauruses. I mean, heck, when you're drawing, you're going to be drawing lots and lots and lots and lots of different poses, styles. I mean, how many times have I drawn a T-Rex? How many times have you drawn a T-Rex? How many times have you tried to draw any of my particular videos? Like, I'm sure, you know, you don't always get it right the first time around. I think I made a video about that. This area would look really good with, like, some scales up there, I think. That could look pretty interesting pretty decent so let's put the shoulders up like that do we want do we want to bring his arms up a little bit more like a an actual bird let's try that let's try some fingers up oh, we're gonna how tall see that's the other thing there's so many different ways you can do like body postures you can do like you know like that like that like that let's put some tails in there just just for the sake of things see that one's leaning down this one is leaning up so there's so many different variations and how you can pose things and that is half the point of this video is to show you that there are so many different ways like the slightest adjustment in the posture can really completely die dynamically change things i don't know if that's really how i want to explain it but that's how it came out it can dynamically change how your image ends up looking. And also, because my camera is pointed slightly off, that is how I kind of wanted it to look. And also, when I'm drawing, like, when you're drawing on a piece of paper, normally, that's fine. You, you don't really have to worry about the composition of how it's going to end up on your screen. Whereas that's what I'm also trying to figure out. How am I going to make this tutorial fit on my screen so that it looks good in widescreen? So I'm not really explaining how I'm drawing each little posture change. It's more just you're watching to see how I go about sketching and thumbnailing. You see how that is so different to that, which is also so different to that. There's so many different variations that you can try, which is also why I like that, like that, like that. Maybe I want to bring it a little bit closer to us. This is why just sketching down quick little jotting ideas is so good. It's so important. There's so many different ways to draw it right now that I could try. If you just went with one go, you'd have so many less options as well. So is his neck going to be up or is his neck going to be out? Hmm. Let's try a scooching down but head up. Oh, that's probably going to not work quite as well for its... um head against its sail, possibly. Who knows, maybe this could be like a sitting position. That could be something. Let me know in the comments below. Are you interested in what, looking at a sitting Spinosaurus? That's not horrible. And also, because I quite like this one. This may be the one that I go with. That's the other important thing about drawing your stick figures, is it gives you time to sort of sit with your stick figures and go, you know what, I really like this one. This is my favorite. And that's when you draw it. But right now, because there's going to be a potential for a T-Rex in there as well, I'm just going to sketch in. How would that work? How would that work? Maybe his mouth is open. And also, I want to sort of do more quote-unquote realistic T-Rexes. Like, you know, scientifically accurate ones. We've got plenty of Jurassic Park T-Rexes. I want to draw some more sort of thick boys. 
I mean, that could be a whole thing in itself. Okay, so I like this Spinosaurus, and now I'm thinking we have a potential for a Spinosaurus versus T-Rex. And I like the idea of a T-Rex facing away, and then facing towards the Spinosaurus. So, postures, neck twisting that way. T-Rex facing the Spinosaurus, although we could also have the head coming down a little bit. Because I really like the old dynamic head pointing down way of doing things as well. And then we could also have the Spinosaurus really towering up. That could be really interesting. Ooh, that could be... I don't know if it would actually work, but it could be interesting. And maybe... He uses his big claws to try and go, Oi, T-Rex, buzz off. Maybe. Might not work that well. Concerning how... <laughs> this is the good thing about drawing little stick figures to practice with. I can already tell that that does not look good. I like him. Do not like him. So, again, we can start off with the T-Rex being a little bit lower. Okay, we'll do some eye, uh, nose holes just so we can kind of know where he's pointing. Maybe he'll be hiding around the shoulder area, so we'll put the arms there for the shoulder. Maybe the leg is coming up. Interesting dynamic poses. Very complicated to draw, but looks visually very interesting. Uh, that's where the hip would be, so let's bring the leg down. Like that. That could actually be really interesting to draw. That could be interesting to draw on its own. Quite like that one. And see, again, the importance of drawing stick figures. Maybe Spinosaurus is lunging. I like to have sort of like a flow going on as well. I love to think in animated dynamic movement. So that helps to... Think like an animator, think what you want it to be doing. Do you want your Spinosaurus to be lunging? Do you want to go, Ugh. and then the T-Rex is slouching to try and avoid this big incoming attack? And I'm starting to think I could actually try and stick by st stick by stick. I could try and frame by frame animate this as well. Could be interesting. This could be very interesting. Okay, the importance of stick figures. Don't discredit stick figures, because it helps you visually dynam dynaminate. That's not a word. Observate? No, no. This is why I don't speak, well, I speak a lot, but this is why I don't try and describe. <laughs> Ironically, my whole channel is about describing. But yeah, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. This is why I draw. And I don't like that tail. There's something I don't like about this side. Love that T-Rex though. Let's just make that T-Rex slightly bigger. That in itself could work for a another video tutorial on how to draw a T-Rex. So many different... P That's the thing about just drawing in general. There are so many... Like the body parts, yeah, sure. Know how to draw an arm, know how to draw a head, know how to draw the legs and all that stuff. Knowing how to draw the parts of the dinosaur's anatomy is one thing. It's a whole different ball game trying to get the whole, you know, dynamics, postures, pose. Is it slouching? Is it extended in its posture? Is its leg up? Is its leg down? You know, how the muscles move when its leg comes up as opposed to when it's standing down. Like, stick figures might sound like the most basic thing ever, but don't, you know, we all joke about going, I can't even draw a stick figure. But you can. It doesn't have to be fantastic. I mean, look at that one. That's not fantastic at all, but that gives me the idea of going, okay, I'm starting from there. Now let's try there. Now let's try here. So, you know. It's all part of the process of evolving your art, expanding your skills, getting more experience as an artist. Because, you know, you're going to be drawing for years, hopefully, so... This is all part of the process and journey that will hopefully be a multiple, multiple, multiple year journey of drawing. So, there we go. A bigger T-Rex, with its leg slightly up. He's... Let's see if I can just... Okay, so it's like that. 
and then crouching down and then like that. Hopefully you can kind of see what we've gone with there with the arrow. I'm thinking back now that I have actually done stick figure tutorials in the past, so 2021 edition. Started this channel in 2015, so oof, we've been going for a while now. Okay, let's go back to Spinosaurus up. Mouth wide open, about to attack. It's got a very thin, narrow mouth though, so. So maybe the arm is coming up, getting ready for the swipe. The uh, fin's not so bad there. Maybe, what do we want to do with the legs? This leg can probably be coming down. Tail's probably be going to be coming down. Well, maybe this arm's actually coming down as well. And that arm is staying up. Hell, hell, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Let's just go with that. That could be cool. Agile. That's the word I'm looking for. How agile do you think Spinosaurus would actually be? Would it be a lumbering dinosaur or would he be a lot more, um, because, I mean, crocodiles. Crocodiles look very sort of, you know, um... Lum is lumber the word I'm looking for? Probably not. But crocodiles look very sort of like just lazy, not like they could move. But you get a chicken or something in front of a crocodile and you're going to see that thing move. Just because it looks like it would be anatomically not quite that agile doesn't mean that it wouldn't be able to lash out. Maybe the T-Rex is looking up. I do like the idea of having the mouth open. Should actually bring that down more to around there. But we can say to add these poses to here. Because I like these poses. I quite like this Spinosaurus in itself could also work in its own drawing. Realistically, similar. But look, mouth open, mouth closed, arm up, arm down, fingers spread out, fingers more resting, leg up leg down, tail swirling this way, tail swirling down. There are so many variations that you can draw your dinosaurs in, so many options. It does make things a lot more complicated, but it also makes things a lot more dynamic, a lot more interesting, a lot, um, a lot more advanced. This is when you start seeing those paleo artists with some amazing postures. The difference between just drawing a dinosaur and then drawing a whole scene. We won't worry about this little stick figure. That stick figure was a little bit all over the place, but there you have it. That's a pretty decent little sketching session. We've got some things to work with now. We've got some swimming. We've got some lying. We've got some standing. We've got some walking. We've got some other forms of walking. We have battle. Another battle, standing up, getting ready to attack battle pose, crouching, attacking back. There are so many options that we have to work with that all started from like these little sketches as well. So, you know, stick figures. They're not as silly and they're not that hard to, you know, you don't have to do it perfectly. You can start off at the most basic, get a little more advanced and eventually you've got something where you're going, I'm going to start working on something a little bit more advanced. So that's where you get to the next stage of your illustrations. And if you'd like to see any number of these illustrations finally finished, subscribe and all that fun stuff. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up. If you think someone else might want to learn how to draw some things on a more advanced level share this video out because they might learn something as well that's basically what i want to do here i want to teach you how to draw better if you're not tired of watching stick figures i have another video on stick figures it's very old but you know it might be something they can learn on how to draw dinosaur feet and draw dinosaur legs it's pretty interesting you can definitely learn something from it so i will see you in the next video cheerio for now